Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 29th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Interesting sextortion email today from Jan, and it actually arrived at our handler's uh, email address. The twist here is that uh, the person trying to extort you is claiming to work for an IT support company that your company has hired. I think what's going on a little bit here is that actually a lot of employees don't really like or trust those uh, no-name third-party IT support companies that are being hired to maintain networks and that may actually make a threat like this a little bit more credible. Luckily so far no Bitcoin transactions to the address in this particular email. Of course we don't really know if they use unique addresses for each email or if all of them use the same address which of course would make it easier to track the money being transmitted. And avtest.org uh, took various uh, antivirus uh, software packages for Android and compared them against each other. And at first, actually, it looks like there is no real big difference. All of these packages uh, were able to detect 99 plus percent of malicious samples and achieved scores in the range from 16 for the lowest and 18 for the highest. So a fairly uh, close range but there was one outlier and that's a uh, Google Play Protect. Google Play Protect is part of Android by default and supposed to continuously scan any application on your device. Uh, well, it does so really poorly. Remember the other applications were 99 plus percent. Google Play Protect only achieved about a detection rate of around uh, two thirds, so 66 percent. So while the other applications ranged in their score from 16 to 18, Google only got a score of six and that's really only based on performance. It got a score of zero for protection and usability. And talking about Android malware, back in January, Italy's Cert Jit uh, did warn about an Android uh, malware called Oscorp. Now, Oscorp was uh, pretty interesting as far as Android malware goes. It was a banking trojan, and it had a unique ability to essentially allow a remote control of the phone for an attacker interactively. So one way how this particular malware was uh, exploited was that an attacker would call the victim and then while on the phone with the victim the attacker would manipulate the victim's account essentially the attacker would claim to call from the bank trick the user into logging into a bank account and then use the session in order to transact money now as so often with malware it sort of faded away somewhat but cybersecurity consulting firm Clefi uh, found what they consider an evolution of uh, Oscorp. Uh, it's now going as Uble and has many of uh, the same uh, characteristics, uh, shares a lot of the same code and still has the ability to remote control the phone using WebRTC as a protocol. And over the years, uh, there have been a number of companies that uh, did uh, market and distribute uh, data about exposed devices on the internet. Shodan probably being the most well-known out of the bunch, uh, but overall, these companies have essentially run more or less what amounts to a port scan. Now, a few years back, there was a website called Punk Spider that went another step. A punk Spider did actually look specifically for web application vulnerability. So what it ran was more like a vulnerability scan, not so much just a port scan as some of the other tools did. Well, Punk Spider uh, didn't really sustain itself. It went away, but apparently it's coming back and 
Complex. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name of the company, QOM PLX, uh, did now uh, reboot Punk Spider and promises to essentially revive the project. Complex is yet another company that sells these large uh, data sets uh, that are collected by scanning uh, the internet. So I guess they want to distinguish themselves a little bit uh, by offering more in-depth vulnerability data. Not sure if it's right what they're doing. Uh, really not familiar with the type of scans they're running. They're offering a browser extension that as you browse uh, the uh, website will tell you more about possible vulnerabilities on that site. What's not clear is if uh, this uh, browser extension does also do some of the scanning, but uh, doesn't look like it from what I've seen so far. Well, and we all know that uh, IPv4 addresses are running out. Hetzner actually just announced that it will increase the price for IP addresses substantially by sort of almost a factor of two in some cases. But there's also a developing scandal around AFRINIC, uh, the uh, network information center for Africa that basically distributes IPv4 addresses in Africa. And Afrinic was one of the last regional registrars that actually had IPv4 addresses available. But apparently a lot of these IPv4 addresses, uh, I've heard numbers of 200 million or such, were misappropriated, were sold uh, outside of the African region. And apparently it's not clear if uh, these uh, deals were actually sanctioned by Afrinic or if it was just more or less a rogue employee of Afrinic that actually profited from uh, these uh, deals. Well, anyway, uh, the IP sales had been reversed, but now there's a court battle starting up and apparently Afrinic's bank accounts were just uh, seized or frozen uh, by a court which uh, puts into question the sustainability of Afrinic's operation uh, going forward uh, if they can't uh, pay anybody. At this point, uh, well, it looks uh, like uh, they're still operating and they promise they will continue uh, to operate, uh, but uh, this is likely going to result in a multi-year court battle is already going on for a couple years. And well, uh, just another indicator of the increasing value of IPv4 addresses. Well, and that's it for today. One announcement, uh, we will switch over to a different data center on Thursday. So there may be some outages in the site. We'll also make announcements on Twitter as this evolves. A couple questions came in regarding the August Raspberry Pi challenge. So again, you have to guess where I will be in August. I will be in a couple places. So uh, basically, any valid answer, any answer that pinpoints me at one particular point in August will work here. Closest is, of course, best. And, of course, you have to put in the answer before I announce this particular location as part of a podcast. The first one would be the Tuesday edition. Well, uh, that's it. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.